Did you know that 97% of all Bluetooth devices will include Bluetooth LE by 2028? The growing IoT market has definitely been a major contributing factor to this increase. Did you also know that Nordic Semiconductor helped develop Bluetooth low energy? It's true. So if you're looking to incorporate BLE into your next IoT design, we should take a closer look at the NRF54L series of wireless SOCs and their development software and tools. But where could you go for a comprehensive look at these solutions? All right, you guessed it. Right here. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Pavel Kanafik from Nordic Semiconductor and I explore the benefits of the NRF 54L series of ultra low power wireless SOCs. We examine the role that processing power plays in this solution the details of the ultra-low power 2.4 gigahertz radio included in these SOCs, and how the Nordic Semiconductor Developer Academy can help you get your next BLE design up and running in no time. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Nordic Semiconductor. Hi, Pavel. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Great to be here. Excellent. Okay. So we're talking about the NRF54L wireless SOC today. But before we get started, talk to me about Bluetooth LE. Nordic helped develop Bluetooth LE, right? Yeah, that's the point. 54L series is our newest generation of these SOCs, but it's worth to mention that we've been with Bluetooth Low Energy since the very beginning when it used to be called Wibri and was developed in cooperation with Nokia and other companies. And since then, we've been the leading vendor of SOCs for Bluetooth Low Energy. And currently, we are in the go-to-choice position, holding 40% design share in Bluetooth Low Energy. That's the statistics from a few past years. So every Bluetooth design has to be qualified with Bluetooth SIG and 40% roughly of those designs are based on Nordic chips. So we've delivered billions of socks already. And that's because of strong portfolio of high quality chips that we're providing that can cover a broad range of end product requirements. And ultra low power is our key feature that we provide to engineers who can expand the battery lifetime to maximum. And we also combine it with high performance, so the efficiency is the key parameter to look at when evaluating the products. But that's about the hardware. We also focus a lot on developer experience by providing powerful software and tools that enables swift development, tech support, and educational resources. That allowed us to reach this position in Bluetooth LE world. Fantastic. Now, these wireless SOCs are part of a larger solution that includes wireless protocol stacks and software development, right? Yeah, because it's no longer the case that amazing hardware is enough. Currently, software plays larger and larger role in development of end products. Therefore, we are focusing a lot on this part Wireless stacks are one of these elements. Our Bluetooth Low Energy stack is known for its interoperability. That's because of our expertise with Bluetooth being there for so long. So we can really assume some corner cases and so on to make sure that Nordic stack is interoperable with all devices that exist. But we also have stacks for Matter, Thread, Zigbee, also built on this expertise and values that we use to develop the best products. Development software and tools, NRF Connect SDK, comprehensive code base that helps to develop products quickly. It contains a lot of low-level software that can be reused and also opens a way to reuse third-party libraries through Zephyr project. Hardware and software tools, helpful in development, PC tools, mobile tools, and so on. 
mobile applications that can be used as tools in development, but also we're providing libraries and samples that serve as a nice foundation to develop mobile applications for the products as companion applications and so on. And lastly, the world-class support developer academy, our educational platform, DevZone, tech support forum and community where anyone can ask questions. So it's held in the form of forum where our tech support guys contribute, but it's also possible to post private tickets. So this setup allows us to support all sizes of customers, including startups through larger companies up to global enterprises. So that's why we are saying that developers are at the core of what we are doing. Technical resources on webinars, on tech tour, and design partners who can help with development if anyone wants to outsource. And all that combined makes it possible to deliver really good products. Excellent. Okay. So talk to me about how these different SOCs in this family line up. So we will focus on 54L series, but to understand how it works in the entire landscape, I will start from 52 series in the left. This is the most popular, maybe it's fair to say that it's famous, a series of uh, socks that we've shipped to thousands of customers already. And that's the baseline, what we've started from, and it allowed us to reach this position. But we also have 53 series, which is a dual core SOC that has a dedicated application processor that can operate in an uninterrupted manner while the wireless stack runs on a separate radio processor. This one has extended memory and also supports LE audio, which is replacing gradually Bluetooth classic audio. Now let's jump to 54H series. That's a revolutionary thing. It's way more powerful in terms of processing power than any other product from our portfolio. It features multiple processors, all combined in one SOC, so it can replace the external application MCU that used to be needed to develop a certain types of products. But the 54L series, it brings the 52 series to the next level. So it features similar architecture, similar feature set, and it's designed for similar range of products. But it contains quite a few improvements over 52 series that we will probably talk about in a moment, right? Yes. Okay, so let's dig into the details of the NRF 54L. What kind of specifications are we looking at with this solution? Let's briefly go through the features that we have in this device. So in 54L series, we have three options, L15, L10, and L05. All of these feature integrated MCU, which is ARM Cortex-M33 running at 128 MHz, which is doubled compared to 52 series. The only difference between these three parts is the memory size. In the table, we can see the options that are available, and they feature new multi-protocol radio, a comprehensive set of standard peripherals, so everything that is commonly needed to build a device and connect other components to this SOC. It provides security for end products and is ready to meet the upcoming regulatory requirements. A few more advanced high-speed interfaces, and the coprocessor, which is a novelty, and it is aimed to address time-dependent tasks and to do some peripheral-related smaller processing. In QFN package option, all these three parts are pin-to-pin -pin compatible. And in the bottom, you see below the diagram, we have Bluetooth, Matter, Thread, Zigbee, proprietary protocols, NFC, all these are supported by 54L series. Okay, so also talk to me about the development flow here. That's the thing that our customers value about the products. It's the level of integration of these devices. So with this high level of integration, it's possible to use 
a limited number of ICs in a product as such a wireless SOC contains almost everything that is needed to develop a final device. So having this MCU radio security feature memory and other things in one package, in one silicon, enables a simple design. And while talking about the design, we have a few options depending on the requirements. We have a very compact CSP package that measures only 2 by 4 by 2.2 millimeters, really, really tiny, and that translates to a compact, complete layout. Easier to handle QFN, which is cost efficient in manufacturing, and also easiest to handle third party modules, components that include all passives, comes with antenna options, and also pre certification to limit the effort on certification. And that can be used in multiple different applications. So the processing power of this technology is an important aspect of this solution to talk about. So how does it compare with previous versions of this SOC? So I've listed a few new features before, but really the major improvements of 54L series is the new radio and improvement in power consumption. One of the components of power consumption improvement is the processing efficiency. So we've doubled the clock speed. So processing power is of course doubled, but also efficiency is an important factor. As visible in these traces, we did run the same piece of code running only on the processor to benchmark 52 and 54L. Radio is off in these scenarios. And what's visible here that 54L completes the task in shorter time at lower peak current, and that translates to more than three times less average current. That's a huge improvement of 54L uh, series. And the next new and major improvement is the new ultra low power radio. This radio features all possibilities that were available in our previous products, but also adds a new features. For example, Bluetooth channel sounding, which is a new technology by Bluetooth for distance measurements and uh, presence detection. It's much more accurate than solutions based on RSSI. It also features 4 megabits per second data rate for proprietary protocols for low latency devices. It performs better than standardized protocols and devices like gaming accessories can benefit from it now. We've also added a finer output power configuration with 1 dBm resolution. That's important when balancing the range and power consumption. Also, TX power and RX sensitivity are on decent level. So these are the new features of radio, but also power consumption has been decreased significantly. So looking at TX system current and RX system current, these graphs show the improvement over 52 series. That's in the peaks, but also it translates to power savings in real life scenarios. We have an online power profiler tool on our web where anyone can check their scenarios to see how they benefit from 54L series. So security is also an important component to examine as well. So talk to me about the security elements of this SOC. Security is a hot topic and we've always looked at security as an important feature of our solution. It is becoming more important now as many industries experience the regulations that are being implemented. So with the features of 54L, it's possible to meet the current and upcoming security regulations for the industries that it's designed for. So we have this secure boot, secure firmware update, secure storage, trusted execution environment, crypto engine, and hardware protection with tampered detectors, for example. So that's a complex topic, but we're providing Nordic platform security documentation where we provide a guidance on how to approach security implementation in the products. So Nordic has a development kit for this SOC, right? 
Yeah, exactly. So if anyone wants to start evaluating it on the desk, there is a development kit available, also distributed by Mouser. And this is like fairly standard development kit featuring all ports available through pins and so on, buttons, LEDs, all standard stuff. But one interesting thing about it is that it features NPM 1300 power management IC. This is an IC from Nordic. And here it is connected to a software controller of this DK. So for instance, it allows to set the supply voltage for L15. And that software configurator also allows to enable, disable LEDs, buttons, and so on. So easy to use development platform that is a must to have to start development. But once anyone buys a DK, we recommend going to Developer Academy, which provides comprehensive courses explaining how to use Nordic solution. So in the path relevant to 54L series, there are three courses. NRF Connect SDK Fundamentals, Bluetooth Flow Energy Fundamentals, NRF Connect SDK Intermediate. So these three courses will take around a week to take and will guide you through all the steps needed to get onboarded, to learn how the tool chain works, how to configure the project, how to implement it, how to debug, a recap on Bluetooth Flow Energy and example applications with Bluetooth Flow Energy, mobile applications and so on. So fairly comprehensive course giving a head start to start developing with 54L series. Fantastic. Now, Nordic also offers other ICs that complement this solution, correct? Yeah, we are known from wireless ICs, but also from ultra low power. And recently we've implemented this ultra low power expertise into development of power management ICs. So we are offering a range of PIMIX that has a number of features such as battery charging, fuel gauge, watchdog, hardware reset, and a few more to limit the number of ICs needed in the design and also enhance the battery lifetime, make it longer. And they are designed to be compatible with 54L15 and our other ICs, but also can be used with any third party components. We also provide range extenders or front end modules to extend range by boosting the TX power up to 20 dBms. That can also increase reliability of the link when where longer range is necessary. So with these components, we often say that it's possible to control each electron from the battery up to the antenna all with Nordic devices. Fantastic. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. It was a pleasure. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Nordic Semiconductor. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.